All right, guys, today we are going to be taking a look at some of my favorite knives and some really solid knives for food prep because food prep is a very important wilderness task. And I feel like a lot of times we carry knives just for that reason. I mean, knives are great and they can do a good deal of tasks, you know, certainly many different things, but a lot of times food prep and natural material processing is one of the largest components because it can be much harder to use a hatchet or a saw to say, you know, skin or flesh an animal as opposed to doing it with a knife. As, and in addition to, you know, as opposed to using a hatchet for, you know, felling a tree as opposed to a knife for felling a tree. So this is one of the aspects where blades and good blades really shine. Things that I was looking for with blades is them being very slicey. So usually pretty thin, pretty low profile blades so that they can pass through materials with reasonably minimal friction and I was looking for rust resistance as well, of course, because it's good to have rust resistance, though not all of these blades are super rust resistant and some are more than others. But the last thing too is also being lightweight because if you are packing a knife, especially in the back country, for the primary purpose of processing natural resources and uh, you know things like food prep, you don't necessarily want you know some huge blade like an SE Hunglis or Hunglis II, you know, just to process a meal uh, to eat. So oftentimes, you know, I'm really looking for things like rust resistance and uh, you know good thin edges that are lightweight as opposed to thick, robust, overbuilt blades. So anyways, guys, let's jump right into it. As always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and the Instagram. It all helps a ton. Okay, now let's talk about them. So as per usual, as we do this, we're gonna be talking about largest to smallest and the folder bl folding blades will probably be close to the end because most of them are pretty small. Okay, the first one up on the list and one that is probably one of the more multi-roll capable blades is going to be the Spyderco Street Bowie. Now this blade was originally designed to be kind of a street fighting knife and in that kind of role, I'm sure it does well. Don't really know if I'd use it for that uh, just because it's not terribly applicable, but it in a fighting role kind of lends its hand actually quite well to food prep because as you guys can see here, it has a very long, very thin blade that is supposed to be agile and you know kind of piercy, uh, but it does also a really good job at slicing things too. Now, one thing I will note is out of box, I think the grind is built to be a little bit more robust. So I ended up taking the bevel back to, I think about 18 degrees, just to make it a little bit more truly slicey. The grind itself is just fine because of course it is a full flat grind and it is an eighth of an inch thick. So this is a pretty thin blade as it stands. And uh, in addition to that too, it is made out of VG10. Of course it does have a coating, though the coating, especially if you're using this as a multi-roll kind of wilderness blade, the coating may not hold up terribly well. It seems to be a lighter coating that I'm kind of wearing off in certain areas already, but uh, it is VG10 at the core, so it is a stainless steel and should be fairly rust resistant with a good deal of, or with a reasonable uh, degree of care. Okay, next one up on the list and probably the most resist, almost most resistant or rust resistant of them all is going to be the Spyderco, uh, is going to be the Spyderco Aquasalt. So this blade is designed for use in water. So it is going to be very rust resistant. It is designed for being rust resistant against salt water, especially. So this nitrogen infused or made steel is very, very uh, corrosion resistant, but it is also very slicey. And you'll notice that it has basically a continuing or one long sweeping belly, as opposed to, you know, the street buoy has very defined belly, very defined straight portion to it. This blade here, the Aquasalt, is basically one long sweeping belly and similar to the other food prep blades we'll talk about, that is very helpful when you are trying to cut through a piece of material in general because as you are moving the blade, it is naturally changing the angle uh, of your blade surface and it's approach towards the material material you're trying to cut. So this should be a really good slicer. For me, it's been a good slicer. Out of the box, I have not changed the degree or profile of the blade because this one came with a little bit more of a setback grind. So this one, I'm not sure exactly what the angle is, but it's probably 20 to 18 degrees already. So 
for me, I've you know cut things with it and it's been performing just fine. It is a good little slicer itself. Of course, being a full tang, or of course being a fixed blade and a pretty good, I think three quarter tang blade. This is certainly one that you could use in multi-role for wilderness applications and survival. In addition to, I think it should be noted, both of the street buoy and the aqua salt are around six ounces. So for their size, they are nearly 10 inch blades. They are very remarkably lightweight and that also makes them very easy to carry. So that's another kind of, like I've said in the past, or like I said, in kind of talking about these blades, uh, that is something important that I do look for in them. Okay, next up on the list is going to be the 3DK MAK or multi-animal knife. And this one in particular is K110 in steel. So it's not maybe the most resi rust resistant, but it should be pretty good. And the cool thing about 3DK is you can get uh, a plethora of different steels out there. You can get these in M390 or LMAX. So M390 and LMAX are going to be far more rust resistant than K110. Um, K110 is just going to be a little bit more durable than LMAX and uh, especially M390. So that's something to keep in mind, you know, what exact steel you want for your application. But this blade has a lot of potential and is already designed as a uh, skinning knife in general purpose, kind of multi-roll knife. So it does have a nice high saber grind or flat grind, whatever you'd like to call it. And from my experience, it's been very good at slicing and uh, overall just processing game animals. It's a really kind of classic and simplistic uh, grind and setup. So it's very hard to go wrong with and overall very comfy handle and pretty, pretty much a solid kind of camp knife slash multi-roll knife. So similar to the last two we've mentioned, this one is going to be pretty good at doing a wide degree of camp tasks, but especially processing food. Now I will say this is probably the heaviest of all of the blades that we're gonna mention, primarily due to its thickness. It is the thickest as well, but at the same time too, depending on what you need, it's going to be a good uh, game processor slash food processor. And it is also going to be a good general purpose uh, kind of wilderness blade. Okay, next up on the list is going to be the Mora Konsbul. And the Konsbul has to be on the has to be on the list because it really does meet all the qualifications we just talked about. You know, it is a reasonably thin blade, reasonably light blade, and of course, super, super slicey because it already is quite a thin blade. I believe it's one tenth of an inch thick. Um, and it's made out of 12C27N stainless steel. And that steel that I mentioned earlier, that's, you know, one tenth of an inch thick actually gets a little bit thinner towards the belly and tip of the blade as it has this secondary or multi-angle grind to it. So this blade is super, super slicey and is definitely designed for processing game animals, processing food, natural resources. And like I said, it's just a benefit that it does have a stainless steel so that it should be reasonably low maintenance. Now, unlike H1, it's probably not gonna be the most rust resistant against salt water, but in for most people, you know, uh, fresh water is gonna be what we encounter. So having a good steel that is pretty much, uh, that's pretty solid for uh, fresh water rust resistance, it will be just fine. Okay, the next one we're gonna talk about is the JBK Layman. And the Layman is probably the least rust resistant of the choices here. It is made out of 8670 tool steel, which in and of itself is not terribly, uh, you know, rust prone, but being that it is a tool steel, it is more heavily carboned than the stainless options. That being said, it does meet the other qualifications for uh, food processing or material, natural resource material processor. So it is once again, very lightweight, very thin. Um, this one's kind of a little bit deceptive because this one has a uh, convex grind and is tapered in actually both directions, but it has a very, very thin, precise tip with a nice long belly and very well disposed or predisposed to slicing and processing game animals. And that's actually where I really do love this knife and it shines quite nicely. It is generally a good camp knife, similar to the 3DK MAK. It is a very well built knife for slicing and being a nice thin 
agile cutter. Like I said too, it is also very lightweight in that tapered tang. It does help reduce just a little bit of extra weight. So very comfortable, albeit very expensive custom knife, but is totally worth it. It is a great blade for a plethora of tasks, but especially processing game animals and natural resources. Okay, next one up on the list is going to be the SE3. And this one has to be on the list because SE usually makes, you know, pretty thick, pretty robust blades. And certainly the SE3 is not a fragile knife unless you get it in CPM S35VN. But if you do choose that route, um, so there are several options. If you do choose to go the S35VN route, it is a little bit more of a fragile blade, but it is more rust resistant. So this one of course is in 1095, so it is super durable, but it is also very, very thin. So this one's right around that 10, one tenth of an inch thick, similar to the uh, Konsbul. Hopefully you guys can see here similar to the cons bull in thickness. So it is very slicey and very thin because it has that 10th of an inch thick blade on top of being a full flat grind. So you have a lot of time for that blade to just thin out. So when you do actually get to that very cutting edge, it is very slicey and very thin. So this one is really designed to process natural materials, resources, skin game animals, do all of those fun tasks. So yeah, the SC3 is, like I said, not the lightest weight blade on the list for sure, but it is certainly lightweight as far as SCs are concerned because SC usually builds their knives with durability in mind. So these knives are not gonna be terribly, you know, fragile, but that's also kind of an advantage. So that is the SC3, and like I said, it is the thinnest SC that they make. And so it does have on the list because it is pretty slicey as a whole. Okay, now let's talk about some folders because folders also make excellent food prep knives. And if you're not necessarily looking for durability, but you have a little bit more carryability in mind, knives, uh, folders are generally the route to go. So the first one on the list has to be the Spyderco Spidey Chef. I mean, part of this knife literally in its name is Chef and it is designed after Chef's knives. Actually very similar to the overall shape of the Spyderco Aquasalt, but it is a little bit more kind of traditional, uh, but it's a little bit more of a kind of traditional um, kind of chef's knife. And so what that means is you have a very wide, very sweeping belly. And of course the whole blade is belly. So you have a nice ability to cut and kind of sweep with the blade and maybe do some dicing, chopping, stuff like that for food. So obviously as a food prep blade, Spidey Chef kind of has to be on the list for that reason. Of course, too, this is made out of LC200N, which is an incredibly stainless steel and uh, realistically will not uh, rust on you. Even if exposed directly to salt water, this stuff is very, very rust resistant. Also, of course, being that this is a titanium handled knife, it is reasonably lightweight and very compact for its size. So that is the Spyderco Spidey Chef. Like I said, it really is a solid food prep blade. Okay, stepping up a little bit is going to be the Benchmade 556 Griptilian or Mini Grip, I should say. And this one is small, not necessarily the lightest folder on the list, but is very compact and still very slicey. It has a nice thin blade. Mine is of course a classic made in 154 CM, but I believe they pretty much exclusively make these in S30V now. And so S30V even more stainless than 154 CM, though 154 is still a stainless. And of course they do make these in a plethora of different stainless steels as well. So they are stainless, they're slicey, and they are really compact. And I have done a good amount of natural resource and game, natural resource, food and game prep with a Benchmade Mini Grip or 5D6. So I do know that these blades are quite capable for their small size and uh, they are generally a good, good multi-purpose wilderness folder. Once again, it is a folder, so it's not going to be the most tanky or durable blade, but it is going to be very reliable for the task of food prep. Okay, last one up on the list and a true classic is going to be the Victorinox farmer and i think the farmer makes a really good food prep blade because this is an entirely stainless tool of course this is the proprietary stainless that victorinox uses so it doesn't have any fancy names and of course will not be like salt water corrosion resistant but for general purpose tasks 
that super, super polished grind should help keep down and eliminate um, corrosion. It also, once again, being stainless will help with corrosion resistance as well. It is also a full flat grind, so it should be a very, very slicey and it is not terribly thick itself. So it does make um, kind of all the attributes of the Victorinox blades as a whole lend their hands very well to things like food prep and fine material tasks. Okay guys, hopefully you enjoyed this list of knives that are pretty lightweight, pretty good for food prep as a whole. Like I said, food prep is something that a lot of times we use our blades for, so having the right blade for food prep is pretty important, pretty handy, and pretty good, uh, pretty realistic. So as always guys, God bless, and I'm out.